definitely follow the leader this morning. Let's see if they cross like they're supposed to. Good girls. Good job. Welcome to the Max. Today's video is going to be a little bit different. So we have um, a local person from our community that has gotten in touch with us and is interested in our farm. Um, she currently is not homesteading, but she's very interested in homesteading. Now recently we have had um, a few people get in touch with us like just over the past few days. And let me tell you how exciting that is. Um, we want our local community to know that there are people within our community that are interested in homesteading. So, so with that being said, what we do is just not very common. I mean, you know, there's not a lot of people around here that have access to raw milk like we do. Most of the people around here either have dairy farms, some type of dairy operation, but it's not a family milk cow where they have access to even their own raw milk. So um, what we do is a lot is very different and it's exciting to know that there are people in our community that like that, that are interested in that and want to know how they can be um, more sustainable and um, kind of change their property to be more of a homestead. So we're super excited. She is going to come to work um, our farm, our property. She wants to learn and I know there are others out there that want to learn too. Like I said, just in the past few days I have had questions about our family milk cow. Um, all the way to the things that I make, the types of oils that I use, uh, essential oils. So there are people that want this lifestyle, they're interested in this lifestyle. So that's exciting to us, people right here in our community that we're influencing and that we're impacting. And that's what it's been always been about for us. We love what we do and we're going to do it on or off camera. But we do it because we want you to know that you can do it too. And for those that are interested or trying to learn the things that we already know, we want to share those things. So that's why we do this camera thing here. And she has agreed to do a small interview with me. So I'm going to let her introduce herself as soon as she gets here. I think I'm just going to go and move the this uh, net here at least once before uh, before we butcher it. Try next week or the next. Just give them some fresh grass just so net and muddy. So I'm gonna get this moved right quick.
course, you see Misty's actually doing a farm tour. Uh, we've had a lot of people show interest in our vlog and also the way we live, kind of more sustainable lifestyle with some things to grow for meat and, and for vegetables. So she's doing that. I just got this moved. It's finished. They're on fresh grass. You see, they're, they're getting almost ready. They're about maybe about a week and a half, two weeks from harvest. They're probably about a three and a half, four pound bird. We're trying to get them to about five, five and a half. So that way we'll have about a four pound, you know, bird completely processed. So they're almost there. We're happy with that. I got All right. Well, we are here and we are just going to give our very first farm tour. So we're super excited about that. And I got a happy blackberry jelly. How Straight sweet. From chain. <laughs> yes, how sweet. So that was super sweet. Um, but I'm going to just pass the camera over for just a minute and let her introduce herself <clears throat> and tell a little bit about who she is and why she's here. So. I'm Crystal Laramore. I live on Hog Chain. I work with King's Daughter. It's been there about 21 years. Um, this pretty much started about 10 years ago because 20 years ago I wouldn't have even known what homesteading was. <laughs> um, spending, t I do ultrasound for a living, so spending 10 hours a day inside a dark room scanning people and seeing disease processes mm -hmm. and things. I know some of it's genetic pre you know, disposition of that kind of stuff, but I also have learned that environmental factors play a role so i craved outside number one because it was such a dark room so i started with a garden right. and i loved it i love being outside mm -hmm. just seeing a little seed turn into something fruit, beautiful plant right. it's just it's amazing so it started from there and then learning and and reading all the benefits of bringing it back to the basics making your own and knowing what's in it is just a huge that's what I want. Yeah. <laughs> so that's why I'm here to kind of learn so that I can kind of see. I've been trying to learn over the last 10 years, but so far I've only got chickens and dogs. <laughs> hey, that is a start. But chickens, it's a start. <laughs> chickens are the gateway in the homestead and most of y'all know that, but for those that, are, that don't. So I kind of tied in the theme today of our local community and we want our local community to see that we do have community within the community that's interested in this. So we're going to take y'all on a little tour today. Now it is January. It's pretty chilly out here and it has been raining and we've not had much sun. So it is kind of nasty, but it is what it is. We're going to walk around and I'm going to teach as much as I can and we're going to bring you guys along with us. So these are American guinea hogs here. Our sow is um, pregnant, so she is due either the end of this month or the end of next month. So sometime within the next several weeks, we're expecting her to have her babies. Um, her babies we will raise up for our meat. Um, so we're going to raise her babies up. They're slow grow, so nine months, so we still lack a while on them. But we will continue to breed her as quickly and healthy you know within healthy guidelines as we can to keep that cycle going um when it, when it comes to to the pigs and the raising them for the meat it's not necessarily going to be cheaper to do so it's just going to be healthier correct pretty okay. much making yeah. sure i had that yep pretty much this is where we keep the majority of our our laying hens and when we do hatch, um, of course, we add them over there to that, the smaller, just until they get big enough. What breed is that? This is um, Easter Eggers, Olive Eggers, Americanas, and I don't remember what the golden one is. I can't remember that one. Colby knows. Six length? Mm -mm. Colby, what's the, what's the our oldest chickens? Orpington. Orf yeah, Orpingtons. So, um, they're our oldest ones, and they're probably four or five years old, that, that, that gold one right there. But, yeah, we wanted to give them a break, so we moved those over there into the, we call that the bachelor pad. <laughs> so, we leave them over there, let them keep their manliness over there, at least until spring when we're ready to start incubating eggs again. Now, the cool thing also about 
getting the eggs incubating in them and hatching them out is everybody wants chicks in the spring so that's another way that we can make money on the farm right. okay. we pull a lot of our fertilizer <laughs> we pull a lot of our fertilizer from out of there and sometimes we can just turn it around on this bed and work it into that which of course it's in the dead of winter so there's not much growing but last but not least our favorite Elsa's gonna have her baby sometime in February, so at that point we will not only be milking Allie, but we'll be milking Elsa too. So Ike, the black and white one, he'll be the first one to go to the freezer for us. Um, he's grown up to be a nice size, but after we kill him off, Beauty's baby will be next. And then, of course, Elsa will just, whatever she has, a we'll probably end up selling it to make profit off of that because at this point we have her as a milking cow we have Allie as a milking cow and Josie is going to grow up to be a future milking cow as you guys can see we had a great time walking around to touring the farm I didn't put everything on camera um, just because it was really muddy outside uh, I was trying to juggle the baby Colby got called into work um, so I didn't get to record everything and didn't get to record all of our conversation because it was about two hours worth walking around and just teaching and educating and that's what's been so important to us is just to be able to teach people. So we have ended our tour. We made our way from the end of the property to the other and it's so exciting to know that we have local people in our community that want to grow and want to learn and want to be more healthy and more sustainable and we were just talking about how it's such a process. It can get overwhelming, it can be stressful, but we can take one step at a time and we can do this. And we can um, go back to the basics and it might be a little bit of a challenge in the beginning, but it is something definitely a goal that can be achieved. It just takes time and work. And uh, we are so excited that people are interested in this and in our homestead. Um, especially locals to us um, because we want a community within a community that likes the same called homesteading. Happy homesteading y'all.